This is the South of Market, a relatively large neighborhood south of Market Street in San Francisco. Filipinos have called this home for about 100 years. In the early 1900s, Filipinos were shipped to America to work in the fields, in the city's restaurants and hotels. Despite living a life of poverty and struggle, it is here where they find much needed support from fellow Filipinos. And in this community of Filipinos, there are modern day heroes who live to make a difference. They are SOMA's Filipino champions. The crime-ridden streets of Soma can take a toll on anyone. Here, kids grow up so fast, sometimes too dangerously. I cut class in my fifth period, and I was just sitting down waiting for the bus. But I didn't have bus fare, and so I thought about robbing someone. I need to get money somehow. Joseph assaulted a schoolmate who was also waiting for the bus. He took his phone. And wallet. That was the first time I got caught. That you got caught? Mm -hmm. That wasn't the first time that you did it? Yes. Joseph was arrested, spent two weeks in jail. Me and my friends were coming back from basketball practice, and we would just mess with everybody, just trying to pick fights and stuff. And then we just ended up getting caught. When I got arrested, like it made me think. Abdul spent one week inside a cold cell. It was the worst experience ever, just standing in that small little room for days on and days on and days on, not doing nothing, just staying in there. It's not fun at all, and that's not where I want to go back to. One time I got um, caught by the police because I was, you know, I was joyriding. I was trying to drive a car, but then the police caught me, and then after um, I got caught for stealing, I got in trouble, like, I got really, really in trouble. For stealing $200 worth of merchandise at Nordstrom's, Rudy III spent the night in jail, and he was made to pay every single cent. I was kind of scared because I didn't know what was going to happen, but then I did it anyways. Rudy III is the eldest son of Rudy Corpus, a man who is no stranger to crime and violence, who was born and raised in Soma and knows its streets, all too well. The definition of suffering is experience, and it was going to just make you a wiser young man. man. It's tough. You know, you grow up fast. My mom and dad taught me the, the best way they can and gave me the best values, but then I still had to go outside and, you know, started making my own choices. So he chose for these to be part of his life. Drugs, violence, crime. I probably see my first body at 10 years old, dead body. I'm 10 years old. You know, got exposed to seeing the body, the smell, how the body looked, and you know, it wasn't normal. But to me, growing up in the neighborhood, you would think things like that were normal. Rudy says he and his friends heard gunshots from a downstairs neighbor's house, but instead of helping him, they did the unthinkable. So we're all looking, should we help? Instead of saying, let's do that, you know what we said? Let's break in the house. He wasn't dead yet blood all around him, he's gurgling, looking at us. And you know what we do? We jumped over the body to go look in the house. To steal stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our mindset though. And that was just the beginning. From 1987 to 1997, Rudy went on a crime spree, going to jail for drug charges, driving under the influence, trespassing, vandalism, and assault. But even during the times when he did wrong, Rudy remembers having a connection with God. When I used to get high off of crack cocaine, weed, alcohol, whatever that I would have, and that was my choice of drug was coke and crack, I would pray. I used to carry this little red Bible with me. And when everybody's high around me, I used to open it up and I used to read it. And everybody used to be like, what the hell is wrong with him? And I used to kind of like, and I was serious about asking God, man, protect me. I don't want to do this no more. But Rudy would pay for all his sins. He went to jail eight times, spending a total of three and a half years behind bars. Does that add to your street cred that yeah, you actually went to jail? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a part of the game mm -hmm. when you're in it. If you do the crime, you got to do the time. When I went in there, I felt better because I knew pretty much everybody in jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a lot of people, hey, Rudy, how you doing? Man, you here now? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what's up? But inside, 
I was really scared. After he was released in 1994, gang violence in San Francisco schools was at an all-time high. After a fight broke out in Balboa High School, Rudy decided it was time for someone to step in. Stop the chaos. He founded the United Players, a gang prevention and anti-violence group that operates by the mantra, it takes the hood to save the hood. When this originally happened, this was just an opportunity for me to have a job and to do something positive with my life. United Players never came to my mind about mm -hmm. having this happen. This is real. Mm -hmm. It just evolved as time went on. Because when I first started UP in 1994, mm -hmm. From 94 to around 97, I was still living in a dark life. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Jick in the morning and Mr. Rob your ass at night type, excuse mm -hmm. my language. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a conscious decision as time went on is that I can't be being a hypocrite. Rudy knows he needed to change. He needed the youth to believe in him, to learn from what he went through. He needed to be an example to all of them, especially to his own children. And I think it helps, it really helps to, uh, to, to use my experience and everything that I suffered for me to help people out because I experienced it. Many of Rudy's staff at United Players are also ex-convicts, people who have been through hell and back, who can tell at risk youth why they need to change now. Before it's too late, because when you gone, you gone, it's a wrap. For the last 17 years, the United Place has helped thousands of at-risk youth. They seek refuge here at the UP Center along Howard Street in Soma. It is here where they find support. It is here where they find peace. Here at United Place, these once troubled youth have a chance to have a brighter future. Here, they're taught things they need to succeed in life. Leadership skills, academic achievement, as well as community involvement. Your parents tell y'all to go to school and get your education, right? Does any of them tell y'all go to school and be a bully? Does any of them tell y'all, you know what, I want you to go to school so you can go to prison, right? So make sure you listen and you respect your teachers and your elders, right? But not everybody does that. I was one of them. The nonprofit group has an after-school program that provides them a safe haven every single day. Here, they're encouraged to finish school, go to college, find good jobs, become productive members of society. Remigio Flood is one of UP's success stories. Ten years ago, he was a hustler. Things changed when the United Players came to his life. Just having a, a, a sacred place like United Players to come back to, to be grounded, you know, kept me, I feel, kept me alive. He now works for the San Francisco Unified School District. Now, he's a mentor, an advocate for change. And it's just a blessing to see a lot of students leave middle school and then carry on to high school and still be a part of the United Players. And then, not only that, to see them go on to college and be successful. I'm so proud of you, bro. You are the epitome of what a United Player is. You don't have to be a former gangster. Rudy says everyone can make a difference in the community. When it says it takes the hood to save the hood, all it means is it takes the people to save the people. You don't have to be from the hood to save somebody from the hood. You just got to have a loving and caring heart. So, do you feel like a crusader? Do I feel like a crusader? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't. I just feel like um, it's my responsibility and duty to serve the people. So when people call you a hero, do you feel like one? No, I don't. No, um, to me, honestly, the heroes to me are the kids. And so I want to speak life into a dying culture. I want to speak life into the people who I see around because not everybody who's walking is not alive. Mm -hmm. There's a walking dead. Mm -hmm. And with the kids, they want to live. We want to live. But how do you get it? You get it through life and light that people breathe into you. Power to the people! Yeah! A man who will do what it takes to save Soma's youth from trouble. Rudy Corpus is a Filipino champion. When we return, we introduce you to another inspiring Pinoy, a historian who shows us why South of Market is a Filipino town.
Filipinos have called the Sato Market home for so many years. It is here where Filipinos who were born in the Philippines and those born here in the U.S. come together and interact. Sometimes there is cultural gap, but this Filipino champion hopes to change all that. 11-year-old Kayla Soriano was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. My dad is, was born in Manila and my mom, she's Russian and Filipino. Kayla goes to the Bessie Carmichael Filipino Education Center in the south of Market, which has the only Filipino bilingual program in a public school system in California and perhaps the nation. I think it's really good because then like you get in touch with your culture and stuff. She says it's sometimes hard to relate with other kids who were born in the Philippines. I met this friend, her name's Keith, and then like she spoke Tagalog and like I didn't understand her. Sometimes people tell her she's not Filipino enough because she did not grow up speaking Tagalog. I just don't let them bother me and stuff. Just stick up for what I believe in. 10-year-old Elena Manalon grew up in Paranaque, Philippines. She moved to the U.S. last October to be with her mother, who left when Elena was only five. Para bang nung nakita mo yung America, parang ay napakalayo sa Pilipinas. Parang ganun ba ang feeling? Hindi, nakita ko po kasi napakalaki. Yung nakita ko po siya, parang wala akong nakita ang bus or taxi. Nakita ko lang po mga kotse. Mga kamis ba Pilipinas? <laughs> like Kayla, Elena also goes to Bessie Carmichael Filipino Education Center. She admits feeling lonely. Nahiya po kasi wala po akong kilala. Ah, wala akong kilala. Apo. Tapos may kumakausap ka sa iyo? Wala po. Elena wants to speak better English, be more American. Para po magkaroon po ako maraming kaibigan. MC Canlasa Community Strategist for the Filipino American Development Foundation, or FADF, hopes to bridge the cultural gap among Filipinos in Soma. Matindi yung labanan ng mga born sa Pilipinas at saka born dito. Ang malaking issue nila kasi lengguahe. Kasi ang Pilipino, ang lengguahe malaki, palagayang loob yan eh. Ngayon kung hindi sila marunong magtagalog, ang mangyari, oh hindi natin kapwa yan, ganun. So, they're, not uh, they're not Filipino enough. Ganon. One way to bridge that cultural gap is to bring together Filipinos who were born in the Philippines and those born in America through an after-school program called the Galing Bata Bilingual Program at the Bessie Carmichael and Filipino Education Center. MCCO founded this in 2001. MC helps new immigrants adjust to their new life in the U.S. and those born in the U.S. to reconnect with their Filipino roots. In 2000, MC founded Ethno Tour, a walking tour which talks about the struggles and triumph of Filipinos. To bridge the cultural gap, MC believes all Filipinos should first know and appreciate their history as a people. Sa mga Pilipino, lalo na sa mga uh, emigrante na Sa simula, nagtatrabaho sa San Francisco. Ang pinaka-malapit na neighborhood sa pagkukunan ng trabaho nila ang South of Market. Kaya dito, isang day lang kung bakit nung 1960s, 1970s, alos mga 17,000 ang tumira dito. Habang nagsisimula sila, dito muna sila tumira dahil mura ang mga renta muna dito. Ngayon, pag nakaipon na sila, yan, bibili ng mga bahay sa Daily City, sa suburbs, sa Union City, ganun. During the 70s and 80s, Soma became known for its Skid Row reputation. The city of San Francisco decided to redevelop Soma. Many Filipinos were displaced, but many also fought back to protect Filipino services and spaces in the neighborhood. Even back then, the spirit of Bayanihan, of nationalism, was alive in Soma and among its residents. Nakita ko na ang susi sa poblasyon ng mga Pilipino, ang simbahan. Kaya nung nakita ko ang St. Patrick, St. Joseph, tapos nung nakita ko ang mga Pilipino, nakapaikot yung kanilang institution, health center, eskwela, maliliit na tindahan, tapos yung tambayan nila, yung kanilang gathering place, sabi ko, eto yung plaza. Dito kayo nagpapalitan ng mga kasaysayan, karanasan, at saka ng resources. Yun ang papil ng South of Market. MC has conducted over 300 ethno tours, which showcase Filipino landmarks in Soma. I felt it was important to um, make sure that my daughters ages 6 and 8 
were aware of their Filipino culture and that they didn't lose sight of their heritage. So they decided to have a children's park, because, and then they call it the Tobi Park. So you will see the different version of Sarimanam. Sarimanam is the mythical bird in the Philippines. When the community were doing their fiesta here, they even documented it in the mural. It's almost up to the second generation, you know, to, to sort of revive that pride in who we are, revive the pride in our blood, revive the pride in our language. And the one carrying the bolo, that's Bonifacio, the founder of the revolutionary organization Katipunan. I read about it in history books if it's even available, but to walk through it and to imagine the communities that live here is really a beautiful experience. MC, pag sinasabi nilang ikaw ang guide, no? mm -hmm. ikaw ang parang nagbe-bridge sa cultural gap sa mga kabataan dito sa SOMA, anong pakiramdam mo? Ayun ang papel ko, parang kumbaga madaming tao para hindi mawala ng direction. Sa tingin mo eh, bayani ka ng komunidad? Sa plagay ko hindi pa, kasi ang kailangan kasi mas mapalaganap mo ang kabayanihan. Mas importante yung mapalaganap ang kabayanihan kaysa sa magtukoy ka kung sino yung bayani. He is a guide, a man who shows why it's important for Filipinos to know their history to move forward as one people. MC Canlas is a Filipino champion. When we return, we tell you about another Filipino champion who comes to the aid of aged war heroes. The South of Market is home to many Filipino World War II veterans. Many of them moved to San Francisco in 1990 after the Clinton administration gave them U.S. citizenship. But America is not the land of opportunities they thought it would be. Here, they have to fight for justice. And one Filipino champion is fighting with them all the way. Eighty-five-year-old Simplicio Yoma is tired. After all, it seems like he's been fighting his whole life. Simplicio was among the 200,000 Filipinos who were sworn in by General Douglas MacArthur to serve under the U.S. Armed Forces during World War II. During this time, 76,000 soldiers, most of them Filipino, were forced to walk 80 miles to the prison camps. Thousands died from fatigue, dehydration, even torture. Simplicio remembers the horrors of war all too vividly. Pero ano po yun tayo na nakikita mo yung mga kasamahan mo na mamatay? Ano pong pakiramdam mo ng mga panahon yun? Eh, Mate, naramdaman ko rin na mahirap din pala ang kwan, ang buhay na sundalo. More than six decades later, Simplicio and the Filipino veterans have a different battle to fight. They are now fighting for full veteran benefits, including lifetime monthly pensions, which were taken away from them when the U.S. Congress passed the Recession Act of 1946. <laughs> Up to the last drop of our one. Mahabang buhay pa kami, hindi namin makakalimutan yan. These Filipino veterans are in the twilight of their lives, but being brave soldiers, they continue to fight. Soma is also home to many low-income immigrant families who fight every single day just to survive. 27-year-old Noemi Pascual never imagined that surviving in America would be this hard when she moved here seven years ago. Her husband Noel suffers from diabetes and can barely walk, so she has become the family's breadwinner, working long hours as a hotel housekeeper. She keeps working even when at times she feels tired. Wala ko magagawa. Kailangan talaga. Kailangan ko talagang magtrabaho para sa pamilya ko sa Pilipinas at saka dito. Noemi sends hundreds of dollars a month to her sick mother in the Philippines. Here, she has to provide for Rosie, a stepdaughter who has special needs, and Nico, her seven-year-old son. There are times when she would have given up, but Noemi keeps going for her family's sake. 
syempre, <laughs> sila na lang ang iniisip ko. Yun. Rudy Sershon has made it his mission in life to help struggling seniors and families in South of Market through the West Bay Pilipino Multi-Service Center where he serves as executive director. The center provides families free after-school care and tutorials as well as housing and food assistance. So kung wala ang West Bay, mahirap para sa amin. Ang hirap. <laughs> At West Bay, Filipino veterans also get the help they need as they fight for their benefits. Rudy's commitment to help the veterans stems from his childhood. I was born in Sangli Point and I came to the United States at a very, very young uh, age and basically grew up as an American. But I came from a, a military family who performed service to the government of the United States. Rudy's father was a Philippine World War II veteran who died in the Bataan Death March. At 21 years old, Rudy joined the U.S. Navy and served in the Vietnam War. So I'm advocating for the veterans because I'm doing what my dad had not been able to do because he was killed. So, and these are his comrades. Rudy was among those who lobbied the Obama government to pass the Filipino Veterans Equity Compensation Fund, which would award U.S. citizen Filipino veterans a lump sum payment of $15,000 while $9,000 would go to those who are not U.S. citizens. I understand about the VA, I understand about the claim forms, I understand about DD-214, about um, being able to prove to the uh, U.S. military and the Veterans Administration that they're bona fide veterans. It passed in February of 2009. It was at West Bay where they were guided on how to apply for this much-awaited benefit. And the first veteran who ever got his check was one of those 87 veterans. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after we filled out the form, he, he got his check, which is fantastic. As commissioner of the San Francisco War Memorial, Rudy also opened the first and only museum in America dedicated to Filipino veterans and what they sacrificed for freedom and democracy. also lobbied for the passage of a California bill that would include the contributions of Filipino veterans in the social studies curriculum of high school students. California lawmakers passed it in October 2011. I decided that this is something that we need to, you know, uh, put in history books so that they will never be forgotten because the veterans will only die if we forget them. For as long as we remember them, they will always be kept alive. Masaya kami mga veterano na mayroon sa amin na uh, mumuno, mayroon kami leader na nagtatanggol sa amin. So, Rudy, do you feel like a true advocate for the community? Well, in a way, I am advocating for the community because the community needs to get out of their comfort zone so that we can accomplish some of the things that we need to do. Do you feel like a hero? Well, I just think of myself as someone who is trying to help. I'm here because I saw a need and I'm here to feel that need. He's a true advocate, a man who knows what struggling seniors and families need in SOMA. He's a man who delivers. Rudy Sean is a Filipino champion. Filipinos are here to stay in the South of Market and for Rudy Corpus, MC Canlas and Rudy Asershon, their mission continues as well as ordinary Filipinos doing extraordinary things for their Kababayans. This is Henny Espinosa and these are your Filipino champions.